Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Odyssey with the crouch button permanently held down. The rules are pretty straightforward, we just have to not let go of Z the entire time. Because this controller has two Z buttons, ZL and ZR, and Odyssey uses them for the same purpose, we can still ground pound and dive and things like that, which will be very useful. Uh, we're also allowed to use multiplayer in assist mode, but we're going to be starting with just single playing multiplayer, for simplicity's sake. As you can see, this is a new game. I've started a fresh file from the very beginning. So, we get to watch the lovely opening cutscene here. It looks really good. Um, it's honestly a little long. I hadn't thought too much about what to say during it, so... <laughs> um, Mario's doing okay, but forgets that hats work like boomerangs. And is therefore summarily defeated. The end. Game over. I'm kidding, Mario can't die in this game, fortunately. You just lose 10 coins, as you may already know. <laughs> Mario's hat is dead too, because being stepped on a hat kills it, as you all know. <laughs> also, Bowser is loud, apparently. Anyway, Mario's hat is actually going to get destroyed by those propellers. There we go. There we go. That's the way. Um, so there goes the airship. And there's Cappy, our favourite hat in the world. Who we'll be meeting shortly, once this cutscene finishes. You can actually skip the cutscene, but I kind of wanted to include it. Just, I like it. It's a nice cutscene. And here's the very beginning of the game. So, that's Cappy there. Give us little pats. And there's Mario with no hat. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, I thought it might show that I'm using a Pro Controller here rather than the Joy-Con, because I am. I'm using a Pro Controller. That'll make a few things trickier, but it does mean holding down ZR is much easier, because you can just use a rubber band. Uh, let's jump up. That doesn't count as a jump, actually, which is interesting. Alright, so I am holding ZR right now, but it's not doing anything, which is interesting. Uh, let me see here. Okay, there we go. I just took our band off for a second, and now it's working properly. <laughs> Not sure what's up with that. Anyway, our basic move set: we can waddle around heinously slowly, we can backflip, we can do little long jumps, and we can roll, and finally we have diving. That's about all we can do if we just have Mario. Oh wait, we can ground punch it. and do a ground punch jump. Um, so that's quite a restricted move set. Fortunately, once we get the best cap ever, who is up here we will have a much larger move set. Uh, one problem you'll notice already is that we can't stop rolling down hills because we can't let go of the crouch button. <laughs> Thankfully, here that's not a problem because the hills are completely harmless, but later on that will be an issue. Uh, in Tostarina, for example, you can just roll off the edge and die quite easily. Uh, no one knows who we are yet, because it's the beginning of the game, but that's fair. Thankfully, rolling is very powerful in this game, so the fact that we're forced to do it is sometimes helpful. <laughs> anyway, there's Cappy, being extremely cute. What an adorable, adorable hat. She's gonna talk to us for a little bit. You've probably seen this cutscene before as well. Uh, there's Tiara being kidnapped and being plopped onto Peach's head. Is Bowser trying to kidnap them or get them to get get up together? Who knows? <sighs> Here we go. Anyway, sad Mario. Say so everything's destroyed. I don't know how Cappy knows that there's a functioning ship over in the Cascade Kingdom, but it's really helpful that she does know that. Oh, what a cutie. What a cutie! Okay, she's gonna pop on her head like this. There we go. Uh, then she's gonna turn into a Mario hat, of course, after a moment. Here we go. Cute. And now we have the best hat in video games. Okay, so we still can't do a whole lot as just Mario, but because we can throw Cappy, we have a lot more options. For example, if we're doing a backflip, or a long jump, uh, hang on. Or a long jump, we can interrupt that jump by throwing our hat. 
which then allows us to do various other kinds of jumps, which is good, because otherwise they'd be unavailable to us. For example, if we roll... Uh, let's see. So it just gives us long jumps, as you can see. If we do a throw, though, and carefully time ourselves, we can do a triple jump instead. So, essentially, having Kathy available unlocks our whole moveset, except for side flips. I haven't figured out how to do those. Fortunately, you should be okay because back flips and ground punch jumps are good, and we can use them. Although, if we're already rolling, we can't use ground pound to interrupt that. The only way you can interrupt a long jump is with Cappy. So, if we don't have Cappy available, we'll have some trouble. <laughs> anyway, um, let's just proceed, and we'll look at the next thing that helps us in this run. Which is going to come up... Oops. First we'll see a bit of a hassle here, which is that we can't throw Cappy if we're on the ground. Because the Y button and every other way of throwing Cappy is overridden with rolling. Fortunately, that's not hard to handle. We can just do that. But it's going to be tricky if we need to use Cappy in combat or, you know, fighting bosses and stuff like that. It's going to be a lot harder. Because we have a lot less precision with how we throw Cappy. Gotta do it in midair. Uh, this part's still easy enough. Uh, these Goombas here aren't a big deal. Uh, we can just do a nice spinning cap throw like that. Easy peasy. Uh, you can't break this door open without using Cappy, so we will have to once more. Do that. Okay, Top Hat Tower can be done without any captures. But I don't think it can be done without any captures while crouching, which is what we're doing. So, uh, we're going to have to capture one of these frogs. Fortunately, as mentioned, we can throw Cappy at the frogs just by doing something like that. Easy peasy. And it plays this cutscene. You can skip this as well, but I really like the cutscenes at the beginning of this game. They're extremely charming. Mario's learning all the ins and outs of frog life cycles here. Very exciting. Now, as you'll see in a moment, when we are in a capture, such as the frog, Mario is now a froggo. Italian riveting. <laughs> this game. <laughs> he froggo. Sure did. As you can see, I'm holding the ZR button still and nothing is happening. So, in a capture, crouching has no effect whatsoever, which is really helpful, because otherwise you would not be able to complete the game, because several captures are mandatory. Uh, if we're ready to exit the capture, we can just tap ZL instead, and that'll get us out. But for now, we'll be fine. You actually can't exit this capture at the beginning of the game until you've gotten to the top of the tower, which is a bit strange. I'm tapping ZL now, and it's not doing nothing. There we go. As soon as you get here, it works. Okay, um, we can get the heart pretty easily. There we go. And that gets us to the top of Top Hat Tower. And I'm just gonna bonk into it a few times because I forgot how to throw my hat. <laughs> There'll be a lot of bonking in this run. Because bonking is caused by rolling and long jumping and other things that we will be doing a lot of. Okay, this part is easy enough. There's not actually any challenge here. It's just some hats to talk to if you want to. Oh, actually, that's a bit of a challenge. So that's a slope there. So we can't actually, you know, roll up the slope too easily because it's a slope. Um, but if we waddle our way up, that's fine. Actually, we can just roll. Rolling is super powered in this game, you may have noticed. Easy peasy. Okay. So that gets us up here. Time for the first brutal fight. I haven't tried to do this while crouching, so I don't know how difficult this might be. Thankfully, this first topper is very easy. Uh, so this should not be too much of a hassle. Yep, you sure did get Tiara. Uh, the later topper fights are, of course, harder, but this one is pretty straightforward, in my experience. Yeah, all easy flips, see? Some simple flips. Shout out to <laughs> Okay, then this part is also easy because we're back flipping everywhere anyway, we're not gonna get hit. I don't know why it gives the life apart for this part. I guess just to make it like, non frustrating. 
There we go. You only hit him twice, so you know, it's super duper easy. That part's incredibly straightforward. Alright, and that unlocks, of course, the portal to the next level, which I think we're going to go through. Let's continue. Yes, let's use this wire to make our way onward. Although, hang on. Oh, we can actually save at this point. That's interesting. Alright. Well then, let's begin the game. I am still holding ZR, by the way. It's got the rubber band on, in case you were curious. Ah, Super Mario Odyssey. A wonderful game. <laughs> I really like that music. It only plays once in the entire game, right there. But it's just this really nice little jingle. Anyway, here's the Cascade Kingdom, which is the first real part of the game, if you think about it. It's like getting moons, that sort of thing. Although, you do have to do the story moons here, and you don't in Tosh Arena, so... Interestingly different that way. Okay, we can do that first. This is a cutscene, obviously we can do a cutscene. <laughs> I'm not going to try for first moon skip, this isn't a speed run, and I'm on version 1.2, so first moon skip wouldn't work anyway. Uh, in any case, back to crouching, back to some fantastic music, because this kingdom is brilliant. Uh, I'll be getting that. Okay, um, this is doable without the capture, but you have to basically do first moon skip to do it. I might give it a try, see if I can. Okay, while swimming, your control's completely unaffected, because only pressing the button to crouch makes you ground pound. Holding it is good. I don't know how to do first when you skip the gun problem here. <laughs> I have never actually done it before, so... Let's just do it this way. Here we go. Again, this capture, once you've done the capture, is very easy, because Holding ZR does nothing. It's just normal gameplay. And there we go, that's our first power moon. Uh, I think we'll try to get to the end of the Cascade Kingdom if we can. We'll see how we go. This one's pretty easy. But da da look at that happy cappy. Ah, what a cutie. <laughs> of course, once we've gotten that, the tower here collapses and bridges across to the Odyssey. Uh, there are various other ways to get across there, using first moon skip tricks, but they're pointless in this setup because it's 1.2, as I mentioned, so we won't be doing them. Also, we did it the wrong way anyway, uh, which is very easy. There we go. And as you can see, we just walked again because that's what this run's all about. We have a bit of a little cutscene here, but we discover the Odyssey and decide to take it because no one else wants it, I guess. I don't know. Seems a little suspicious, really. Now, most, now you need five moons. The thing is, most of the other moons available at this point are not actually... Like, sorry. Oh, there's a lot of moons in Cascade Kingdom, but most of them don't spawn until after you've done the story, which is really strange. For example, there should be a moon just there, but it's not showing up. Because we haven't done the story yet. Which means it's quite hard to reach the requisite five moons without doing the story. I believe it is possible, there may be a way to do it. Uh, we will be using some checkpoint walk to speed this up. That is available. You can checkpoint walk for holding that on. Uh, Oddly enough, even though the Odyssey's, you know, here and all that, none of these doors were, even though you can see them. <laughs> um, so here's, here we can get a moon by doing this. And that will be enough to get us to the requisite five moons we need to get out of Cascade Kingdom. Once we have the multi-moon atop the falls, which is of course the story moon for this bit. Uh, let's see if we can do this without breaking that wall. I think we can just go around here without too much trouble. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of bombs in this one. I'm not a great player. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Um, that's more bonking. Again, because you can't stop rolling, after doing a long jump, you pretty much are going to bonk into the next wall you see. Uh, unless you have enough foresight to predict what's going to happen, and, you know, throw Cappy to interrupt your roll at the right time. But it's tricky. Uh, I will be needing to do that a lot more later on. Here's another checkpoint flag. Um, these guys are pretty much you're supposed to do a hanging cap. It's not hanging up, spinning cap throw here anyway. So the fact that spinning cap throws are so easy in this particular setup helps a lot. Um, we're going over here to the mural section, but there's a bit of a problem with the mural section, which you're going to see in a moment. Is that once we break it open with this chunk, there it is, all looks fine. We can get into that pipe without any trouble, but because we're holding ZR, once we enter the pipe, we immediately crouch and come back out into the normal area. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to avoid that. Uh, because like a mashing jump and I'm trying to move off the pipe. If you could get off the pipe, it would be fine. You can't move while you're crouching, but you can hop around, like jump and then move. It's doable if you don't start on the pipe, I've tried that. But because you start on the pipe, you can't actually enter this 2D section. Which is the only one in the game that's actually mandatory. Except that there's a skip you can do. So we're going to try to do that skip now. I've never done it before, but I know how. So we'll see how we go. Um, I'm also taking a lot more damage than I really should be. Let's go back here and get this heart. It's just a regular heart, if I recall correctly, not like a wipe up heart or anything. He did up an up throw instead. Uh, as I mentioned using a pro controller, the only problem that might introduce is we can't do a downwards cap throw, which since we need to be in the air to do any kind of cap throw, might be a problem. Having some problems here. Uh, let's try. Let's try rolling, and then there we go. That's the way. Okay, so the way you do the skip is you get the dinosaur who is over here. Probably bonking on the way because that's what I do. I bonk. Get the dinosaur like this. Then you have to spring off the trampoline hidden under these rocks at just the right angle. That was not it. So it might take a few tries because, as I mentioned, I've never done this before. Thankfully, this isn't a speed run. It's just me trying to do it. So it doesn't matter if it takes a couple of attempts. Okay, here we go. Uh, this video is approaching about 20 minutes. I reckon once we've done Cascade Kingdom, assuming this doesn't take too long, now it's the end of the video for this for now. Uh, I'm just gonna wander around here a little bit, wipe out some of these chumps first. I know you have to be at a strange sort of angle so you get close enough. But I'm not quite sure what that angle is because I haven't practiced this. Yes, that's it. That's how you do dinosaur. Which is mandatory, because you can't go through the 3D section in this setup. And I'll actually have to do Dino Skip again to get back up there and reach the checkpoint flag later on, because again, we can't go through the 2D section. Uh, anyway, this battle might be a little tricky, because we have to hit that chain jump with Cappy a whole bunch of times. And, as we have discussed, we don't have the luxury of throwing Cappy at everyone. <laughs> Thankfully, you only have to hit her three times, it's not too tricky. And I'm gonna viciously roll in order to avoid being hit where possible. Although I am getting hit quite a bit, this may be an issue. Well, maybe we'll be okay, we'll see how we do. We'll see how we do. That's two hits out of three. Oh, 
Thankfully, the chain has limited range, so since we were quite far away, it becomes easier than we otherwise would be. Just keep running away, and bam! There we go. Problem solved. So that's the Cascade Kingdom cleared, which is probably one of the hardest parts of this run, unless we're going for some of the really tricky capless moons. Um, it's just because you have to dino skip, and I've never done it before. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we now have that multi moon, which means we have completed the Cascade Kingdom. There are a lot more moons here, but we don't need them. We need exactly five, and we have exactly five. So, good for us. <laughs> um, one of the moons we could have gotten earlier, I mean, you can get, one of the moons you can get before the story, which we can't get because of the way we're playing, is that there's one in the 2D section. But you can't get through the 2D section because of the pipe problem. So, basically, yeah, we can't do that. Um, I suppose I'll restore the Odyssey before ending this, this video. Let's throw a hat at it. There we go. It's interesting that the moons fall apart and turn into separate moons when you do this bit. Anyway, we have exactly five power moons, which is the number we need, to activate the Odyssey. Here it goes, powering up the Odyssey! Very exciting. That's right, the Odyssey is restored. I like how putting moons into it makes it get painted. That's a pretty neat effect. So, now that we've done that, we have access to the Sand Kingdom, and we can go back to the Cap Kingdom if we wish. We can also just go back to Cascade like this, and just wander around getting more moons if we want. There's one up there, but we don't actually need any more moons, and it's going to be a bit tricky to do with crouching. Oh, no, we can get up there pretty easily. Actually, I checked my warp up there, because I already hit that flag, so it's not that hard at all. But, you know, you get the idea. Uh, I reckon we will actually travel on the Tost Arena, because the cutscene for doing that has some really nice music. Once the Odyssey starts... Beautiful. That's essentially a remix of the Fossil Falls theme, of course, but I really like it. It's, it's just really nice. Um, I guess I'll leave this cutscene in as well. So, this is us traveling on. Cappy's turned into a captain's hat because, of course, she has. Uh -huh. Very cute. <laughs> she is very classy. Uh, have a bit of a conversation here. Uh, she's going to tell us about ground pounding. I don't think we've actually needed to ground pound yet, but... Yeah, we can ground pound, so that's not a problem. Uh, we don't care about the action guide. Thanks, Cappy. Uh, the Sand Kingdom. Entirely covered in sand, it gets quite hot. Yes, it does. After doing the story. So, actually, it will not get quite hot. But you'll see how that, see that later on. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we're arriving in Tost Arena now, and I think that's a good spot to end this first video once we've landed in Tost Arena, which is, as you can see, quite cold. There's all these icicles everywhere. Deserts are often quite cold, so this does make sense. Although, typically, cold deserts have, you know, snow, rubber, and sand. Actually, no, they wouldn't. They'd have ice. Snow is rain, so they wouldn't have snow. They just have ice. Huh. Uh, well, oh, Cappy, some deserts are cold. I, I was just explaining this. Yeah, there's a power moon up there. We are not going to be getting that. 
Um, anyway, that's us for now. Uh, we just take a look at Mario shivering. And this was Danielle, and we'll be back in another video later on to do the next part of the game. Yay! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. Um, leave a comment or something if you think I'm cool, or if you think I'm not cool. Either way, either way. Anyway.